the world is changing every day. Being able to observe and monitor and make changes based on those observations is really important. We're working across a number of these different areas from agriculture to climate to water to help provide the information that will help improve the day-to-day -day activities. Earth observations are anything in, on or around the earth. You have a mixture of in situ or, or sensors which are in place, like on the ground or in rivers or in different areas. You'll also then have the satellite observations, so the satellite imagery that can complement that. So using the combination of the different information sources, you can make decisions. So the main challenge today is the, the human interaction. So people working together, sharing, you know, opening systems and opening data, being able to access this data that's been collected, some of it over 40, 50 years. That's, a, that's the real challenge. So actually the technology's there and will always be developing, but it's how to harness the technology in this kind of environment where um, the government can make decisions. So we use the, the government devices policy so they can make those decisions better and that's really what we're informing. I am an eternal optimist. I'm not particularly optimistic about the state of the earth. As a coordinated body of nations, somehow we haven't grasped that humans are having an effect on the earth. GEO is a phenomenal organization. It's actually a community. Some people would even call it a movement where you've got selected member countries of the United Nations and another series of wonderful organizations, scientific, technical, international organizations that come together to just integrate observations about the Earth. We're a broker in, in a number of different senses. So we broker access to openly available Earth observation data and information resources. So we're constantly trying to get people to share data or advising people if data is available, just letting people know what resources they can use for their decision making. I like the idea that we are trying to provide uh, non-biased, neutral evidence for making intelligent decisions. We are trying to ultimately make life better for uh, humanity on this planet by providing Earth observation data and information, opening up access to it, allowing governments, uh, decision makers to access this data and to make uh, the best decisions possible uh, based on, on, on this data. We're working in a, a vast number of different areas where we're observing. One example could be soil moisture. You can use satellite imagery to give you that insight, but you can also use sensors in the ground. Now that helps you measure things like crop forecast for fields because if the soil's too dry or if the soil's too wet then it will make a big impact on, on how you grow crops in that area. We have a group that came together for the Sustainable Development Goals and they've just issued a report of case studies where earth observations can help inform help measure and monitor progress on those selected sustainable development goals. And zero hunger is the second goal. In Uganda, there's a World Bank funded project being done through the Office of the Prime Minister in Uganda. And they're looking at food security. So they have a, an early warning system based on GeoGlam. GeoGlam is a global agricultural monitoring activity producing reports on two areas. One is around the yield or the crop production and looking at on a monthly basis how earth observations can inform decision making. If you have for example a disaster very very quick we need data. An easy example is you you have a flood in a country and you want to know where the population has been touched to establish mapping and to allow the NGO or the government to just go there and provide some help. All this kind of data can be easily accessible if you know that exists. GEO is really trying to encourage people to share their data and also to maybe provide some tools to have access to this data more easily. GEO has, has advocated open access to data ever since its inception. This is one of the main, main goals of GEO. 
And I think that with, for example, the Copernicus project that's been put forth by the European Commission, that the data coming from the Sentinel satellites will be openly accessible to the public. And I think this is really one of the successes of GEO, is, is, in, is providing the, the impetus to uh, provide open access to data. We did a study a couple years ago that walked through five different reasons why it's important to share data. Education, capacity to build development, environmental transparency, but it's also good for the economy. And so there's some wonderful examples out there about as soon as a government adopts broad open data sharing, it's good for their sister agencies, but it also shows that it's good for the private sector and the economy at large when governments share data. 2011, we had a big earthquake. The earthquake hit the northeast part of mainland Japan. It was magnitude nine. That's the worst disaster on record in Japan. I felt the massive shake at the time, but worse things happened after the earthquake. 500 kilometer in long, the coastline of Maine had a direct impact of the tsunami. Many towns located on the seaside completely washed away. I was involved in the Geodharma, uh, that is the initiative of Geo, Geo, Data Access for Risk Management. That activity also tried to focus on proactive of disaster, not just after the disaster response. So they also include the observation of recovery from the disaster. With the uh, broad open data that was available from Landsat, what one country, Australia, has done is construct something called a data cube. So they ingested for the continent of Australia the entire Landsat archive data going back to 1972 all the way to the present. They put a water algorithm over that entire archive and said, show me every pixel, 25 meters by 25 meters, over the entire continent that's always been wet, always been dry, sometimes wet, sometimes dry. And what I think is so exciting for us in GEO about this technological advancement is we could finally start doing some serious uh, landscape analysis over time at a continental level. The, the code is open source, so it can be used by anyone around the world. So there's a, an open data cube initiative that's being, um, I guess, managed by one of our participating organizations called CEOS, the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites. So at the moment, I think there's something like 25 countries active at different ranges or different scales um, of engagement in the Open Data Cube. So this is something that has a lot of momentum behind it already and it's very, it's very new at this stage. Earthquake took place in New Zealand in 2016. The government of New Zealand sent out a call to the international community for help when Geosecretary received this call for that information to Asia, Oceania countries and China stood up to coordinate uh, some uh, organizations within the country to uh, respond to that. It's interesting that not only uh, public uh, institutes uh, made response, but also some uh, private sector companies did some contribution. They were coordinated by the China Geo Office and uh, sent the relevant images to New Zealand. So this kind of uh, case that uh, Geo can help. We have the uh, Oceania Geos Initiative. We hope to make it a mechanism to formalize such kind of surveys, not only to uh, disaster risk reduction, but also to uh, climate change, climate change mitigation, and sustainable development goal. We're taking another look at our work program and seeing how can we help address those global priorities? What actions could we be doing that we may not be doing right now? Um, and where are the opportunities for GEO to become more engaged in those priorities? We're a small piece of a gigantic puzzle. We're trying to reach out to the remaining 
hundred or so countries that haven't joined GEO. By joining, there'll be increased awareness about Earth observations, integrating those observations, the importance of broad open data sharing, and how joining programs and initiatives like GeoGlam can have an effect right down to the end.